Today we're going to learn how to map the temperatures on a weather map. Remember that temperature is a measure of the intensity of heat present in a substance or object. In this case we're mapping the temperature of the air just above the ground. We call these isotherm maps. Isotherms are lines on a map that connect areas with the same temperature. We'll begin with a blank map of the U.S. showing temperatures from all the reporting weather stations around the country. The time and date are stamped in the upper left hand corner using a system called Zulu Time. Zulu Time can also be called Greenwich Mean Time. It's based on the time at the Royal Navy Observatory in Greenwich, England. Because our map covers many time zones, it's important to use a system like this to avoid being confused about the time the data was collected. There is no AM or PM in Zulu time, and Arlington Heights time is six hours behind. If we subtract six hours from the date and time on the top of our paper, we'll see that it was 11 AM on March 24th of 2016. To draw the isotherms, the first thing we'll do is cross off from the key any temperature ranges we won't be using. Once we've eliminated the temperature ranges that don't appear on the map, it's time to choose a color scheme for our key. Most people use warm colors like red to represent the high temperatures, and blues and purples for the cooler temperatures. Once we've assigned a color for each temperature range, it's time to go around the map and shade in each number the color that it needs to be. I'll start with the 20s and shade them all in purple. I'll start by shading in the 80s region. I draw a line around those numbers and then shade in that area all the same color. Next I'll draw a line in to contain all the 70 degree temperatures and shade them in orange. I do the same thing for the 60s. And this is where I start to run into a problem. 60 degree temperatures can't touch 40 degree temperatures directly. Somewhere in between them, they have to be 50 degrees. I'll have to account for this when I shade in the green area. At this point, it's probably easier to switch and start doing the lows. I'll go down and do the 20s purple now. Next I'll shade the 30s in, dark blue. If I've done this part correctly, the rest of the map can all be shaded in for the 40s. Once I've finished my map, it's time to check it to make sure I've done it accurately. If I've done it correctly, isotherm lines never cross each other. regions that are not next to each other on the key cannot touch each other on the map. Finally, there will never be a place where three or more colors meet each other. 